Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If perhaps there's one thing that, that drives my wife crazy, it's that I love cartoons. I think they're fantastic. And one of my favorites growing up was the Scooby-Doo Mysteries. And so when I saw the Scooby Snacks in the aisle at Vaughn's, I had no choice but to buy them and give my son Scooby Snacks. But you know what I loved about Scooby-Doo? It was a mystery. And I like mysteries. I like finding those clues, seeking out the answer. And the best part about a really good mystery not that Scooby-Doo ever did this, because if you're a kid, you've guessed it about halfway through the episode. But when they whip off the mask, and you say, Whoa! I didn't see that coming. That's the kind of mysteries that I love. Well, for the human race, understanding God's plan has, well, has always been a a great struggle, a great mystery. But now at the right time, that great mystery kept hidden has been revealed to us in his Son. And that's the message of Epiphany. God the Father utilized direct promises throughout the Old Testament through those prophets, through live taking action in our lives, through movements in faraway lands, movements through the patriarchs, through Abraham, through Joseph, through Jacob. He used symbols, visual aids like the temple and the sacrifices to give us clues as to this ultimate mystery to give us clues to the salvation of the entire human race. And yet for the world, the work and the will of the Father was still a mystery. For many of the traditions and the message of the Savior were mysteries that were hidden. When you read this, says St. Paul in our text for today, you can perceive my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to the sons of men in other generations. This story was written by, was carried out in the life of the Israelites and of the Jewish people. The promise of a Savior was directly tied to the genealogy of David. And so women of the line of David, I imagine they might have felt a bit like the people in our day who on a Saturday night hold that lottery ticket, thinking that I might be that one, that one to win that prize, to be a part now of this promise fulfilled. But of course, these Jewish women, like the whole nation, well, they made an assumption that salvation was for the people of God, for the Israelites. God's people, those who would bear the Messiah, they had the clues, but they assumed the salvation was forever to remain a mystery to all other nations. Those stargazers in Babylon or Persia, forget about it. The ancient ones in India or China, Japan or Korea, no, not for them. What about these modern people, you, you Americans? Good luck. Where do you sit then? Do you sit in the dark? Are you clueless? 
Eternal life, total mystery. That's a rather personal thing. The stakes could not be higher. But unlike the mystery novels of today that a clever fellow might, uh, might possibly figure out, the story of Christ was actually guaranteed to remain a total mystery until God himself revealed it. Even Paul, the chief apostle to the Gentiles, he recounts the importance of the mystery being revealed to him by the Father. The revelation was not necessarily a hidden reality. It was one that was spoken about, proclaimed but in many places not believed. Humanity has this habit of taking the approach that on our own we can do great things. Think of that Old Testament story, the, the tower of Babel reminds us that we sometimes get a bit full of ourselves. In fact, the Father saw so strongly that we believed in ourselves that he confused the people with different languages in order to make it harder for them to communicate and achieve this sinful goal of becoming God. Now man, try as he might, and foolishly proud as he is. But we didn't learn the lesson, and we've been failing ever since. It's no mystery that humankind is desperately in need of a savior and a king. People have ignored the mystery of God and his promises. Not just now, but throughout the whole of the Holy Scriptures. But you know that plan of salvation, it never changed. Never did God waver from the first time that he made that promise to Adam and Eve in the garden. That mystery was set in motion when God said to woman, you shall have pain in childbirth. And when God spoke to man, all creation is cursed because of you. You will toil in the ground as punishment for your sin. But as with all mysteries, the plot becomes clearer and clearer as time goes on and as that story continues to unfold. Characters and people in the mystery emerge. They stand out. In the case of the Father's great mystery throughout the pages of Holy Scripture, there is one who comes on the scene rather late. But it becomes immediately clear that this one, well, he's the leading actor. He's the main player. He is the Christ. The apostle reminds us clearly that in Christ, the Father has brought forth his clear truth clarity of his will and his plan, which had been hidden for ages past. Jesus had now come, and as the light of the world, he pierced that darkness. And now Paul, an instrument of the Father, is communicating his divine message, decoding his mystery to the world. The mystery is not one that was forever to be kept secret. Nor was the mystery something that the Father had intended for us to keep quiet once the moment of revealing had arrived. Now is the time, Paul declares. When you read this, you can deceive, perceive my insight into the mystery of Christ which was not made known to the sons of men in other generations, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. And what was this mystery? This mystery is that the Gentiles 
our fellow heirs, members of the same body, and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The message that was formerly thought to be a Jewish message, one that was connected then to the lineage and heritage, now Paul makes clear that it's for the Gentiles just as much as for the Jews. This gospel message. This Jesus is the centerpiece of salvation, the cornerstone of forgiveness for all now and forever. And that's the message of epiphany. That's why God put a star in the sky so that those Gentile wise men could follow. And that's why these wise men, these wise men from the east, maybe Babylon, Persia, well, Scripture doesn't tell us exactly where. That's still a mystery. But these wise men from the east, they came and worshipped the king of the Jews because God had now revealed that he wasn't only king of the Jews. And that's why Paul says, this grace was given to me to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to bring to light for everyone what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God, who created all things, so that through the church the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was according to the eternal purpose that he has realized in Christ Jesus our Lord. There's to be no mystery about the world's Savior, Christ Jesus. The eternal plan of God is that all people should be saved through him, through his death, and through his resurrection. The plan is now realized in the ever-living Savior, the risen King, our Lord, Christ Jesus. And this message... This revelation of the mystery of God is now unfolded. It's now decoded. So that we might then have the confidence, the assurance that his word is true. And the message is no longer hidden from the ages long past. So now Paul says... We have boldness and access with confidence through our faith in him. Do you see where that puts you? No longer far away from God. No longer distant in the east, or the west, or the north, or the south. We have access to him through the reconciling blood of Christ. We have access to that throne of grace knowing that when we pray, he hears us for Jesus' sake. We have access to his every blessing. And having access to the mystery revealed, we're called to proclaim it. Yes, spoilers in this case are a great thing. The Father desires Jesus' story to be told, to be shared. We are asked by our Lord to share the good news that all are saved by the grace of the eternal plan of God. All now have access to the Father through the Son, Jesus Christ. And as the mystery of God becomes clear for the world, we, the children of God through Christ, are called to proclaim to live, to declare the message of the gospel to all people. Like Paul, we have been given clarity in the gospel. Clarity in the message as God calls us now 
to share with this generation that Jesus Christ is Lord. And like the wise men who came from afar to visit this mystery made flesh, we are able now to come and kneel before the Savior. We are able to see that mystery made known from ages past and now brought into the light. We see the light of the world in the form of his Son. And by his light, we are able to see clearly. So give thanks. Give thanks and praise to the Lord that you now have that ability to understand to explain this mystery that had been hidden. For this is the good news for all who call themselves children of the Heavenly Father. In Him, we have access to the Father. In Him, we are heirs of the promise. In Him, we are brother and sister. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus.